Welcome back, everybody. Spot on Jaguars podcast brought to you by Teal Rain. We got a great show for you today and just one more weekend till NFL football where we kick off in Indianapolis. Today, we're going to talk about the Jaguars dismantling of the Dolphins last week. We're going to do the preseason recap and some extra news and notes. So if you like Jaguars football and all things Duval, hit the like and subscribe button, mash the notification bell, and let's get started. Okay, everybody, we're back. It's Eric, Ben, and Jeff here to talk about the Jaguars' um, destruction of the Dolphins in preseason week number three, the last game of the preseason. Uh, but before we go over that, I'd like to say serious note, um, there was some violence over the weekend on game day in Duval, uh, made national news. I'm sure everybody heard about it. Our thoughts, condolences, and prayers with the victims and the, mm -hmm. all the loved ones. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, we're not we're not going to talk about that very much, but, you know, thoughts that's, and prayers for everybody. that's for yeah, somebody else absolutely. to discuss. But back to what we're here to do. We're here to talk about Jaguars football and specifically this week's well, the Dolphins are supposedly a contender, and the Jaguars just showed them that not in our house. Uh, they're not a contender in our house. And it, yes, it is the preseason, but let's talk about the starters first. Trevor Lawrence looking sharp, um, 8 of 10 for 92 yards. And the big the big thing where he, the fourth down, four, fourth and six, he looked up, said, no, 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 I'm sorry. I missed that throw. This one's on me. I'll this. get you back, and let's go for it. Looking at his players, looking at dead nine, saying, let's go, pulling the leadership quality out, the leadership card out, and saying, let's go for it. And then connecting the play after that to pick up the first down. Uh, Trevor looking like complete command of the offense, had a little bit extra playing time Saturday, and looked phenomenal doing so. Ben, talk to me first about Trevor Lawrence, and then we'll get into a little bit more of the guys. Well, I mean, it was what we were looking forward to. You know, we, we said that we wanted to see the ones-on-ones and, and see how they go, and, and um you know, they, he looked great. Um, he had, there was, from what I saw, there was only really one pass that was off. Um, Zay was open. And, I mean, he fired it in there too, man. That thing, he's, it was crazy. My shoulder was hurting just watching it because he just zipped it in. But it was wide left of Zay. Um, but the rest of it was awesome. Um, he looked really good. And, uh, like you said, commanded the offense. They came out. They went straight down the field. Um, didn't score. Um, but then they, they uh, and I thought it was the perfect amount of playing time. Um, you know, we talked about, hey, we just want to see something and get them out of there, um, you know, a half or two quarters. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, but no, it was a perfect, I think it was like eight, nine minutes left in the, in the, in the second quarter. And it was like, it was enough. Like as soon as they scored that touchdown, I was like, get them out. And uh, Peterson was listening. Looked sharp. Looked like yeah. he'd been, looked like we're halfway through the regular season already. Yeah. But specifically for me, it was the. Calm down, my bad. It's that command. I, I like that accountability. Yeah, I'm take I, my car, my bad. And you know, I got you on this. Accountability. Yep, mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, was it? He hit Christian Kirk. It was a little cross route, right? Picked up the first down. Yeah, looked great so. doing so. Um, other other guy we've been talking about, Calvin Ridley, with the phenomenal catch. Yeah, I mean, a crazy. great catch. Uh, got reviewed and everything. He got the two feet down. I thought off the, from the angle they showed on the first on the broadcast because I watched on TV. You were at the game. I don't know what your your view was like. But from the very first, it looked like he didn't give down. I didn't think he did. I didn't think he did because it was crazy. I mean, he's, he was right on the line and he was falling out of bounds. Like all the momentum is going out there. The ball, the ball placement, to me, was perfect because it was that back shoulder. He was the only person that had a chance to get it. The the um, the cornerback is you know his momentum's going the complete other way, and then Ridley was able to contort, turn back. But I didn't think he got it. I mean, when it, when you know when I'm watching it live, I was like, "Oh wow, what a catch!" Right. But yeah, that's out. And then when I saw that they were reviewing it, like, okay. And then they showed it on the board. I'm like, "Oh, he caught that!" Oh, and then and then but yeah, it was to crazy. his credit, he jumped right up and said to the coach, "I caught that ball." Yeah, yeah, he said, "I caught yeah. that ball." So you know, he knew right away he got the two feet down, which was you know awesome. And it was kind of close because he. I mean, the minute that you, I think that you could have called it a catch, you know what I mean? That one foot hit down and then he got the other one down but um but regard I mean it was good I mean, it was the biggest good. thing that stands out and to he was me getting too. held by the way too he the was the biggest thing that stands out to me was was Dolphins blitzed yeah and Trevor put trust in Calvin in the short time they've been together and threw it off his back foot to where Calvin can get it, it and that trust and if you is look there. at the replay when Trevor let that ball go where Ridley was I mean it was like Ridley was like I don't know, 10, 15 yards, you know, and, and he I'm just, he, he just put up, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, the timing, the trust, the placement, and then Calvin doing what Calvin does and making a big play, that's just. Which is what we, not that we didn't have some big play receivers before, but you need that guy that, you know, some 50-50 balls, you know, the guys that's going to go up and, you know, what was it, was it uh, uh, Terrell Owens, uh, 
you know, who can make a play? I can. Remember when he was on the sideline? That's what we need. You know, get your popcorn. They, that was the, they've only been playing for how long? I right, mean, and that's what you're saying. There. This is a glimpse of the connection we were hoping for, yeah. and and they showed us that glimpse of it Sunday, mm-hmm. Saturday, and looked good doing so. And yeah, that's just that trust is there, that connection is there, and if that connection is there between those two guys, the league can just look out right now because yeah. that's gonna be that's gonna be something to look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, backup quarterbacks, uh, C.J. Beathard, showing us why he was. We had talked about Nathan Rourke, and you know he made the phenomenal play. He had some good numbers against the backups and third stringers, and we were we were actually pondering what is it about Beathard that they see that makes him number two. Well, this week he he showed us eight for twelve, one hundred thirty four yards and a touchdown. That's why if if for some reason Trevor comes out for a stretch of time or any you know significant time, he can come in and he can win you games, and he can do it against you know the number twos, the number ones, the guys that, you know, he might be seeing. And he showed that this week. And that was our question was answered about this guy. He looked good, too. Ben, go ahead. Tell, tell me about oh, C.J. No, I mean, he looked good. And, you know, Peterson said all along he's the number two, um, even though Rourke has popped up and, and played well and made it a tough decision. Um, but uh, he looked good. I mean, he looked real sharp. There was only one at the end of the half. We, we were kind of in, like, a, um, you know, the clock management. And I, I, I don't know who it's on, but um, – there was just uh, we didn't have any timeouts left, and I think he threw it to a guy that couldn't get out of bounds, and and the clock just expired before the you know we could get a field goal attempt. That was the only negative, and that could you know that could come back to bite us at some point. But you know even though it's you know maybe far fetched or whatever, but uh, but other than that, I mean, he looked real good. Yeah, I mean obviously Trevor's you know your franchise guy, and you do not want him to get hurt. But there is like if he does, if hypothetically he does, there's kind of no really worry you're com- you're comfortable I'm very yeah. comfortable yeah, yeah, yeah. it's and not like all oh, seasons a wrap no yeah. it's it's I'm, I'm like okay we can we can still right. do what and we got fan favorite and podcast favorite even uh Nathan Rourke his time was cut short because the game was cut short now yeah. with uh 8 minutes and 32 seconds in the fourth quarter David Davis for the Dolphins got uh the injury it yeah. looked serious they you know they put him on the is that a stretcher thing the immobilizer if they took him off uh happy to report they had movement in all yeah. the they yeah, hospitalized that's good, him. good news but happy to report he had movement in all the extremities so uh, good up, big ups to him. But um, so Rourke's time was cut short. He went four of six uh, mm-hmm. on the day, so he still looked okay. But has he done enough this preseason for you to be kept a roster spot? Because those, you know, those roster spots get to be valuable. And do you keep a third quarterback? Do you not keep a third quarterback? If you don't keep him, will another team snatch him up? So there's the there's all that going into it. Has he done enough to earn himself a roster spot? To me, yes. To me, yes. Simply put, yeah. Yes. I, I mean, you know, I, I, nobody wants to listen to a bunch of fence sitters. I'm still kind of torn over it just because, you know, other areas with some of the injuries that we've had that, you know, um, you know, I kind of want to make sure we have those those positions locked down. But I, it, gun to head, I, yeah, I, I think we keep. Them. I mean, like I mentioned last podcast, just watching the 49er season and just quarterback after quarterback after quarterback go down for them, it raises my eyebrow going. Oh, oh, okay, okay, because it's a very important position to have. Like it is oh, a very the it's the it's, the it's the position. It's, yeah, it is right. the commander in chief who commands the offense, directs the offense, and we have three guys that can freaking do it. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I don't you know I understand what you're saying, and it makes a massive valid point. But to get someone as good as him, God, well, with some of the injuries we have, uh, you know, maybe that gives you a little bit more room now. You know what I mean? To you know, like meaning like. We may keep somebody like, for example, we'll talk about it. But you know, Ventrell getting hurt. Um, but th- there were some thoughts. You okay, there, buddy. <laughs> Depression setting in. I'm gonna have to have a drink on that yeah. one. Yeah. Um, okay. On to another. On to a. Let's talk about the running back room. Let's talk about the running back committee. we we showed this weekend. Um, another podcast favorite, <laughs> Tank Bigsby. But talk about the running backs for a second. Tank had the fumble, six for thirty-seven with the fumble. Still looked good rushing and averaged five point seven yards per carry for the entire preseason. Looked like a beast Impressive. again this weekend outside of the fumble. Uh, but actually, our defense held after that turnover, so I'm proud of the defense. But Tank, obviously, looking good again. We like him still. You know, fumbles are fumbles. Got to clean that up. Um, ETN, 8 for 39 with the touchdown. And Deanders Johnson, even 6 for 26. So, I mean, this is a credit to the offensive line because they're they're giving them room to operate. This is a credit to the running backs. They're running powerfully. They're running fast. Looking real good. That running back room is starting to look like one of the, one of the top-tier running back committees in all of the NFL. And especially for us, this is going to be it's going to be a big deal. And I like how you mentioned, and you got to give credit, offensive line. Mm-hmm. Offensive line looking offensive good. Offensive line looking good. You're yeah. talking about the entire game for every running back that ran against the Dolphins. We still averaged five yards a carry. Right. Oh yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's something you want to look at for an offensive line. And the, you know, I said I said in the opening, the Dolphins are supposed to be a contender this year. They're they're supposed to be a, a 
one of the favorites, one of the yeah. top favorites to you know make some noise this year. And we looked we looked great. I mean, we looked really good versus the Dolphins, versus our first team, versus the second team, winning a lot of the one on one matchups. You know, our receivers were winning one on ones versus their DBs. Our offensive line was protecting. Now we didn't get the sacks. We didn't get the sack numbers. We had zero sacks. Was it zero been? I don't think we had one sack in the game. In the game. Yeah, I don't think we did. Well, I don't think we had a sack at all. Uh, check that. We'll put that on the on the Double screen. Check. But yeah, we had zero sacks for the game. But they were they were getting in there. They were getting pressure. They, I, I want to yeah. give them that. But you know, the quarterbacks sometimes they, they can release the ball too. They're well, playing. they were yeah. I mean, they were um, they were doing they were getting the ball out quick. I think it was like three step drops for Tua and um, they you know and we were kind of doing the same thing. But it, they um, what you expect for a speed offense like yeah. Offense. So so you know for the at least you know the. Kind of limit. Even though we saw ones on ones, it was kind of limited. So um, you know, if you get it for a full game, you know, you can kind of extrapolate from that. We we probably would, you know would have got to them, or hopefully would have gotten to them. But you know, for a small sample size, uh, we didn't get to them. But I, I'm not really sweating that you know too much. Uh, Yasir Abdullah added the interception. One yeah. of our favorites. We talk about him week to week. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was good to see too. Um, and Ben, give us a little bit about the crowd. Tell us about the twelfth man. Uh, you were at the game, uh, first home game preseason and last last game of the preseason. Tell us about the crowd. Were they into it? Was it packed? Tell us. Give us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, well, it was. I actually had it as the first thing that I wanted to talk about on the um, the show notes that you didn't bother reading. Oops. Um, oh, which I, I'm surprised it wasn't an autograph. It wasn't an autograph session, right? No, that was second. It was oh, second. it was number two? Very Sorry, important. got, got ahead important. of myself. Um, no, but the crowd was awesome. And it was, uh, you know, it was like the first thing I noticed when I walked in there. And there's just been so many, you know, uh, sad moments in that stadium walking in. Uh, not so many sad moments, but just through these lean years where I'm like sitting around and I'm like, you know, alone, uh, you know, against like the Niners. Before or, preseason know, game. Before, to have the crowd yeah, even as for, electric. Exactly. And it was something that's new. It was packed. It was, you know, it wasn't a sellout, but it was um, the whole crowd was, it, they were into it. The, it, it. You know, you look around, there weren't a whole bunch of like, you know, empty spots. And, um, and it was predominantly Jaguars. I mean, you know, the Dolphins, um, you know, there was a few Dolphin fans there, but I mean, by and large, it was it was all Jaguars. It was it was it was it was and, awesome. And you got to think in this year, contrast to years past, where the anticipation of this team is going to be able to make some noise, make a deep run, do something in the postseason. The palpable tension you feel in the audience, you feel in the crowd. They're behind this team. They know what we we're they know what we're capable of, and we're finally ready for that. This, yeah. this, the city's finally ready for that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the big board of palpable. <laughs> Can we talk about that for a second? Well, I'm looking it up. Oh, no, do you? Yeah. Get your thesaurus out. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you got to – I mean, the crowd was legit. Like, because I watched the game and just seeing everybody excited. I mean, just like – Now, I would ask our resident tailgater extraordinaire, Jeff, how the tailgating party was, but he was at a charity golf event for charity – that he could not miss. I got to prioritize it. And, uh, charity uh, <laughs> Jaguars. But know? there was a little Jaguars tie-in. Uh, oh that, yeah, because uh, the lead, lead, they had a uh, the band there, uh, Dad Bods, I think that's what it's called. Oh, Dad, yeah, Tom yeah, McManus, yeah, McManus was the lead singer, yeah, yeah. and I'm going, I'm looking, I'm going. Wait a minute, is that is that Tom McManus? And he was jamming out, bro. Really good, I never he, he, he was jamming out. Radio, I never heard him. Yeah, he was jamming out. I was so we had I'd a little like Jaguar to, love like there. We had a little <laughs> Jaguar love. Nice. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about the the preseason as a whole. Um, let's talk about we we've obviously mentioned a few guys here on the majority of the podcast, and for the most part, the draft picks. You talk about Anton Harrison. You talk about Brenton Strange, Tank Bigsby, Ventrell Miller. Um, yeah. But mm. these guys, the draft picks are really hitting. They're on all cylinders. They're really contributing early and in a big way, which that's also different from years past where we've, we we have missed that. we've missed on draft. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. So uh, that's very safe to say. Obviously, Tank. Uh, he, we're a big fan of Tank Bigsby on this show, but he he's been the standout. But talk about some of the talk about some of the guys we've drafted: Anton Harris and Brenton. Talk Would about you that, haven't man. mentioned Tank a lot. No, I, I, that's actually not true. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I, I love Tank. Tank's my uh, my Ventro Miller uh, to you. Um, but no, he, he, uh, and I think a lot. I mean, we've all talked about Tank. Yeah. I mean, he looks he looks awesome. Um, he's just in addition to an already you know really talented um, you know position on the team and uh, he looked good and, and that was yeah for me I mean when I look at the um, uh, you know the the highlights of the preseason and and it, it's the rookies it seemed like every play or every game they were making a play there was a couple names popping up uh, but yeah uh, you know I, I love tanking in the game you know so it's funny 
I already know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I already know. So Jeff makes up this in fantasy land, this story um, that uh, I'm, you know, I jinx the team somehow He's with, a with my jerseys. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really not though because. Well, I've, which jersey I've, did you wear this weekend? I wore Tank Bigsby. So give me his stat so, line. Tell me so, what happened with Tank. So Tank, tell us what Tank, happened when you walked in the stadium. So okay, yeah. So I walked <laughs> in the stadium and we got there a little bit late and um, we're you know in preseason mode. We were just kind of easing into the stadium and uh, I get in. The guy sits next to me. I'm like, all right. So what I miss? And he's like, yeah, team looked real good. They drove down the field and then Tank fumbled. And I'm like, oh no. I was like, oh, oh no. And what was your first and, thought? Um, the thought you unfortunately. Yep. The curse. Um, yeah, because it's not it's true, real. and I was like, I didn't want to give him a- ammunition, but um, I mean, we all know who the mush is, uh, you know, because Mr. Uh, Ventrell Love over here, now Ventrell's done for the season. But um, That's mean. Right but, after uh, he mentions I mean, buying a Ventrell jersey, and oh the next thing you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, after, exactly. <laughs> hey, maybe uh, I should get, we're on a text thread. A guy. And we're talking about how good he is. It's like, maybe I should get a Ventrell. And we're like, but no! <laughs> but Two no. days later, hurt. Okay, so, but he redeemed himself because, um, you know, after the fumble, they go down the field again, and he was he was running angry. And then he had that one play. I think it was right before the Ridley catch. The truck. Um, yeah, where he just he trucked the dude and, and kept going. So, um, yeah, I mean, Tank, tank looked awesome. Tank. He was like, call me Sherman. Another another I'm, one I'm of our high picks, over. Brenton Strange, was the number one rated rookie tight end going into Now, I haven't yeah. seen what's after the, the Dolphins game, but was the number one rated rookie tight end going into it. And this was a draft class full of tight ends, early, mm-hmm. picked often. Full of tight ends, and we we grab Brenton Strange, and he's looking good, converting third downs, making those catches, and he can block. He can block. And that he guy, can block. man, that dude's yeah. looking real good. Uh, Anton Harrison. Well, uh, yeah. So I mean, the when I look at the the highlights of the preseason, it, it's it's the rookies because every game they were making a play. Um, and, you know, you can go down the list. Um, Anton Harrison has looked good. Um, and for me, I loved it that he, you know, went up there um, and kind of worked over Aiden Hutchinson. And um, Brenton Strange, Tank Bigsby, Ventrell. Don't want to leave out Antonio Johnson, obviously the injury. Yeah, he, uh, he SEC guy. Yeah, but they, they were the, the – um, defensive, uh, defensive back. Yeah, the, uh, the defensive backs coach. And that's a position of need for us, too. I mean, we, we need as many of those guys as we yeah. can get. Yep, but he was singled out as being, you know, they said he, he just he looked different than the other guys. So um, he was playing real well before the injury. Um, Parker Washington, um, Eric Hallett had an interception in the game, uh, a real good interception that he made. Um, uh, Cooper Hodges, uh, before his injury, they were they were saying that he projects. I mean, he, he was looking real good, and he projects. Uh, you know, Baselli was I think saying on the radio the other day that um, you know he's going to be with this team for a long time, and he's going to be a staple so of too. our offensive line. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, I agree. With I'm that. not an offensive line expert, so I go to the. the I mean, Hall you look at offensive linemen. But. Um, also, another one of another one of the podcast favorite Yasir Abdullah uh, contributed last game with the interception. Yeah, had an interception. Looking looking real good the preseason. Um, um, we're a hoping sack. he's yeah he's, he's he'll got a bring sack it. And an inter- we're hoping he can bring it in the regular season. And uh, yeah. I guess we got to talk about it. Uh, we got to. And we have to talk about it. Heavy hearts. Uh, Ventrell Miller, out. He's going to be out for the season. Uh, just placed on the injured reserve. Achilles tear. This that, is Jeff's guy. My yeah, my sleeper, my my guy that I was so excited about because obviously I'm a Gator fan. I've watched him through the years, and seeing him come into like first game sack, QB hit, couple tackles for loss. Second game sack, QB hit, couple tackles for loss, and and and, and no one was really. Well, what, well remember no, they no, said no, we it, overdrafted him. Remember? Yeah, he he had a six round tag on him. We took him in the fourth. There was questions about whether they drafted him too high, and I, I mean a lot of the stuff he proved wrong. The proved draft it day, wrong. What, we mean the, what they was said the draft they day? said his speed wasn't good enough. They said he tackles too high. Was and, it sideline to sideline? Yeah, and I'm going. He's sideline to sideline's fast. His IQ is is amazing. He's a great Le- leader. leader. And being that he even got hurt last game, still led the team in five tackles. Right. You know, and losing him. I was very upset. Looking like, to prove just, all the pundits wrong. He, he did he a good did. job doing so. And looking did. like he was going to be a game changer, brought in in the fourth round, which is huge. You just, you know. And, and you know, and everybody said we right draft in. too high, but when you have a, a, a player available that you're going, and he's in fourth round going, okay, well, we're going to take him. Value, he value, value. value. But, and that was my only thing. I mean, I joke around, you know, just because. You're kind of over the top, I think, sometimes with him. I really like His him. His beard's over the top. It is over the top. <laughs> but, Might be over the top. Um, no, I, I really like him. I was excited about the pick. I mean, when we when we drafted him, um, it was really only because we had, you know. A plethora of linebackers. A plethora of linebackers. Yeah. But, again, but, available. Yeah. What a, a good player. And the only thing that, you know, really that it, people talked about that 
is kind of a concern is his health because mm-hmm. he missed the senior bowl with a, a right foot injury, which he had to get, you know, uh, Surgery on, which made him miss a little bit of a couple of the uh, the training camp at the beginning. Not to play year. doctor or anything, but that was the same the same foot that he had the Achilles tear on. Correct. So, so we don't a, know, you know, if we'll that had one if one thing had to do another, but it is, you know. But like we talked about before, he's twenty four years old. Right. He's young, right. and, and with, with today's medical technology, because I mean, if this happened years ago, in the like past, you talked about in the past, uh, Achilles tear was a, a career ender or could just. Slow, Sap your slow athleticism you down, yeah. and explosiveness to the point where you weren't the same player as before. But now, youth is on his side. He's 24 years, 24 old. years old. Technology on his side. We're better yeah. than in the years past. And I'd like to say that watching him on the field, the way he attacks the game, I'm thinking if he He's attacks in. his rehab and if he attacks his physical therapy that way, like we expect him to yeah. do. So, I mean, I Which think. Which is that leadership role that I'm going to take leadership. I'm not going to get right. down. I'm going to just go ahead and, you know. I'm hoping he has 85 to 95% of all of that back by next year and going forward, he can get to 100% of his, you yeah. know, former health. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's our, you know, we're hoping for. It. Yeah. And I hope that's the only devastating injury that. I experienced. So we've talked players. about the rookies, and, and for the first time in a long time, we get to talk about guys that we know are going to be there and are going to bring it, and we haven't even mentioned them. We're talking about guys like Tyson Campbell, Alua Khan, guys that we know what they're going to give us. And I, got, I got their jerseys, too. Stop mentioning it. You can't Let's even, stop you can't even jinx it. them. I mean, they're, but these are guys we just plug in and play, and we don't have to think about because we know they're going to come yeah. bring it at a high level week in and week out, and that's just a convenience for for the Jaguars and you know as a whole. Well, that, and you know the again highlights of the preseason for me, um, it's our depth. Um, you know, it didn't matter what team was in there. We were, you know, dominating the other team. I mean, we were we were clearly the better team. Uh, the Dallas game was close, but they, you know, that it was the score, score was wise. closer. Yeah, score the score wise. was closer yeah, than the game really was. Wasn't, yeah. And um, it's just you got to give you got to give Balky his credit. And in um, the preseason, yeah. is a testimonial t- to the depth because yeah. we are playing backups, third, second, and third stringers against their backups. Yeah, but in years past, in years past, though, when our backups, you know, we're we making get, excuses like, like, oh, mad, it's mad just strong. third string. Undefeated and this and that, in the preseason but, for the yeah. first time since was it 1997? 97. 97. So undefeated. I know. Yeah, I understand. It doesn't matter. But. I think. Uh, I think that was the year 97. Was uh, was a year that Brunel got hurt. And that's when we got to feature Rob, Rob Johnson, Johnson, which turned into the Fred Taylor God, draft. Pick. Traded Rob Johnson, Johnson yeah. brought in Fred Taylor yeah, with that totally pick. Yeah. About Rob Johnson. But but yeah, but I mean it it, it um you know, again, credit to Balky, uh, you know, his 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 draft picks that the we've hit on you know some of our best players, like you said, um, yeah, great you job. know whether it's a draft they're bringing in through free agency, and so now you know like I you know like I said before, when I'm watching in years past, you watch preseason games and yeah, I always have it on; it'll be in the background, but I'm tuned into the whole game, you know, and I, w- I want to watch every snap, especially now, this know? year. That's what I'm saying. No, no, especially that's, that's what I'm saying. In years past, it's more like uh, um, I got it on the background, yeah. you know. I, w- I want to, but wanna... this year we're paying attention okay. to every player because. Yep. That we have some really good draft picks, and mm-hmm. and we've talked about this off camera about like Tank Bigsby and Dearness Johnson, and credit to the offensive line mm-hmm. for for just the, the like we we averaged five yards a carry against the Dolphins. I know it's preseason, but credit the offensive line, which was one of the question marks coming into this year. Opening going, those can holes, we do allowing it? the running backs to get to the downhill I mean, running phase where they can they can blast through the air and make some noise. I mean, yeah, the offensive impressive. line looking real good, protecting Trevor, protecting yes. all the quarterbacks. The offensive line looking like a strength. Uh, um, yeah, you know. Cam, Cam looked good. Uh, he, he he didn't have a great game versus the Lions, but he rebounded well. And obviously, you know, we're not going to have him for a few games. But um, it was I, it was never really a question for me. Honestly, it's there's a little bit of uh, – you know, uncertainty with the the injuries that we've had, but I mean, thus far the O line has played well. Yeah. All right, and so and so that's the good of it, and and obviously there's some bad, and let's talk about a little bit of the bad things, some, something we need to work on, uh, aka the special teams. Uh, prices of beer. <laughs> beer um, prices. No, no. Prices of water. Uh, Seriously though, uh, talk about the bad, the things you didn't like, the things that need to be picked up on uh, going forward, well, preseason wise. I mean, it might be a little nit. Picky. Um, there's really not a whole lot of bad for a team, you know, that's about to go undefeated and win the Super Bowl. But um, you know, there's it's you know it's a warming up phase. Um, what <laughs> the nothing, jinx is just nothing. real with you. The jinx nothing. is just real with you. So, uh, but no. Let me uh, take his microphone. <laughs> uh, low lights for me. Um, it's the injuries. You know, we've had a little rash of injuries. Um, 
the uh, special teams. Special teams has yeah. uh, been a little bit shaky. Gave up some major yards against what Detroit. Yeah, yeah, big and, yardage. And and, and and that's where some of these cuts that are coming up are going to be crucial because a lot of those guys are going to be playing special teams. You know, and uh, so not all the special teamers. There's one. There's one special team that's sixth out. Let's talk about the punter real quick. Uh, Jeff's been telling us day in and day out. Jeff Logan Cook, man. <laughs> this guy. You talking about a weapon? This you talking about eight punts in preseason, averaging 49 yards per punt, three of them inside the 20. Well, Completely mean, turns the field position around. Way around. Well, a couple, Flips the a field couple years ago, he was uh, he was our best player. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's and so, I didn't tell nobody that, but he was. Yeah. But, he, <laughs> he but was. I mean, but he is a weapon. I mean, we're gonna have what he's we also think. enormous. I mean, he, yeah, he's a big six, dude. Five, two, uh, six five, two thirty. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. have what we all think is gonna be a prolific offense. Yeah. And so, you know, ideally we're going to be going up and down the field. But in those rare occasions where we don't, to be able to pin, you know, to a add team back. To that offense. And then we talk about the defense being a bend but don't break. break. But, like, I think one thing that we're going to do is um, they're really stressing takeaways. And that's one thing that's that was part of the don't break last year was, you know, we turned a lot of games because of, we were able to, you know, and force field turnovers. Position, and obviously, so, turnover, turnover battle, field position battle, the most important Telltale signs of who's going to win. Right, but you pin it. You pin, you it, pin it back. back. And right. then, you know, you, you turn it over and boom. You got, yeah, you get the you ball pin, right you, back. And, so. and against our defense, that is a very fast east to west kind of defense. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's a long drive. And our, our that secondary, is a long you drive. Know, like Cisco, Rayshon, Tyson Campbell, you know, I, I feel like if we, it goes back to the pass rush. If we can get enough pass rush, um, we're you know we're gonna look to force so, those. So Logan Cook, uh, you're the real hero, okay, of this preseason. <laughs> he has been. Okay. He has been. In years I'm past. impressed. No, I still, I, I yeah, I like Logan Cook. Um, but for me, the only other negative was um, that was really glaring was penalties. Penalty, you know that penalty, first yeah. game. Um, they seemed to, they up. seemed to yeah they, yeah we we righted the ship. That was glaring in the first one because yeah. it was just kind of like. It was excessive, but uh, but yeah, they seemed to clean those up. So yeah, I mean, it was it was a good preseason, undefeated. Um, injuries, I'd, I'd say, was probably the, the worst part of it. You know. Yeah, but, I mean, but nothing that's like I mean, I know Ventro. That's a devastating to me is a devastating loss. But every injury is like oh, it's not mm-hmm. like a killer. And that's life. the good thing about having depth is you can sustain. An injury you can sustain. Here, but not we don't want the season injuries. No. Well, that's what you know, and that's yeah, it's. Injuries hurt. Um, it's gonna. There's gonna be some big decisions. Injuries hurt. That's profound. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's you profound. really nailed that one on the head. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, of, uh, speaking of big decisions, the roster decisions. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know of a couple. So, full disclosure: this is being filmed on a Monday. So, yeah. you know, we we won't know until tomorrow the deadline, the roster deadline. Cut. Which was the two who got cut today? Uh, it was Kevin Austin Jr. receiver, yeah. and we kind of knew that he he might be getting cut. But we we thought it was between him and Tim Jones. Yeah, and couple, Tim Jones had the big catch, the 74 yard touchdown from a couple. So, you know, a couple episodes we talked about it seemed like the two um, receivers uh, in a in a in a loaded receiver room. It was kind of seeming like it was going to be Between Kevin Austin and Tim and Tim Jones, and um, Austin had looked really good in, in training camp. And they were talking the, about him. They yep, Trevor Lawrence yeah. Trevor him out singled him out. Um, the coaches singled him out, but then he got into the games and nothing happened. Right. Um, Tim Jones was at uh, the Detroit game. He caught that real pretty pass yeah. um, from. He's was that also from Bethard? Yeah, it was Bethard. Yeah, yeah, from Bethard, and then and then you know at it, the game it's not, it's, Saturday. It's not a knock against Kevin Austin. It's just a numbers game, and, and this room yeah. is just full of talent. And one of them had to go. And, he was that, and we, I think, we all believe he'll get picked up on a roster somewhere. He'll, I think, he's gonna make this league. And there's still more guys that are probably not gonna make the team that you know are good players. You know, yeah. and there was specifically you know talking. We about mentioned the it, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right, and we have another cut defensive end Jordan Smith, yeah. uh, another casualty of cut down day. Uh, we, 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 he didn't get to, he didn't get to show his skills. He didn't get to do much in the preseason. Didn't look like. Well, he was hurt. He was hurt last year. But, but you know that bodes well for Caleb on which you know they've come out and said. I mean, he, I, I think 100 percent he's making the team. And even Peterson, I think today said that he was the third pass rusher. You know, and honestly, and, he showed it to me last game. Even though he did not complete the sacks, he's. Right. Where he needs to be to disrupt a play, which to me is, is a big deal. Special teams player. I have his jersey too, by the way. God, I, must, uh, I told you to stop talking about, about that. And you know, so the thing is, um, so we'll get all the roster cuts uh, in the in the coming days, and tomorrow. we'll be talking tomorrow, about tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. We'll be talking about that on the next show. But we can project a few. Though. We don't think Snoop Connor's going to make the team. Uh, no, you I don't know, think he's going to make the team. 
So I think I think that numbers game is going to give us another casualty there. But yeah, we, we're going to find out all those rest because we'll bring. I kind of want to see if show. Nathan Rourke stays. I would love him for to stay. I get. Like you mentioned earlier, I get it if he doesn't, but I would love to see him stay. No, I mean, I think, you know, going into the season, I thought for sure it was going to be two quarterbacks, and then he made us all think. And if you look at if you look at another Super Bowl contender from last year, the San Francisco 49ers, they had injury after injury after injury, Which and they were down to a third in an emergency quarterback situation in the NFC Championship game Fourth. of all things. Well, was fourth. Fourth, I mean, fourth. Yeah, so in the yeah. NFC Championship game of all things, I even heard they called up Philip Rivers at the NFC. Oh, if you remember. Yeah. But you know, and it makes you think. You know, if if we do have those aspirations and dreams of competing for a championship, then maybe maybe we do. Well, have like, to I think you, I think you said last. You know, Chad freaking Henny. Um, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Said, even if it's not, you I'm know, if it's long term, it. we're probably screwed anyway. But. Um, but if it is for like a game here, I mean, it can make a difference in, in, in seeding or, or winning the division or whatever it might be. If you have a guy that you can trust, which Bethard is, but now Rourke has shown to be, you know, then we can put him in and there. It's and it's the surrounding cast that makes them elevate their game because you got a great, you got a stable of running backs, you got plenty of wide receivers, you have a offensive line that has literally showed that it tight can protect. Ends. You got tight ends. It's yeah. like, man, yeah. okay. And, um, and Nathan's Garner mentioned point two point eight. Yeah, he does those. He you know he can kind of make something happen. Those off schedule plays and and you know he's creative and and those are the type of guys. In, in all honesty, like they can win you spot games. They're they're usually not good for long term. like long term. Yeah. You know, unless you're just like a special athlete or, or you know something like that. But um, for those guys, you can come in and, and you can you can string some wins together you know, and, before they get enough tape on you. And we, we talked about this. We talked about the, the Jaguars, like I think it was Saturday um, after the, the Miami game. I do not see any holes mm-hmm. that stick out with this team. That are, that's a major concern. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously we're going – coming from last year, we're going, oh, we're going to be really good. We're going to get a little bit further. I'm not. I will not be shocked if we actually go to the Super Bowl. Like well, they talk about, about us being a sleeper. I do not see a hole well, a in this team that, that is with, a major I concern. I don't think that's a shock at all. I mean, I think that we're definitely. I mean, we're contenders, and um, but it's just more real now. But I got to ask you something off the record. Um, I'll, I'll edit this out. Uh, had you had a couple of drinks when you called me? Yeah, yeah absolutely, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah, we were, we were all yeah. entertained. Well, we were, I was I was at a tournament, a golf I know, tournament. I know, I know. And we, the, the beer is flowing like wine. But thank you. How'd you shoot? How'd you shoot? Actually, we played great. I played phenomenal. I played one of the best games. I was dialed in. Boy, I was dialed. I was like Trevor Lawrence just throwing touchdowns. Do you bring? Do you get those little like the little Fisher Price set? I knew he was so stupid crap like that. Yeah. He's so I don't I don't like this guy. Do we have to keep him. <laughs> Jesus. Can we just get the jerseys with him? <laughs> right. uh, and so that, I mean, any other news and any, any other takeaway from the preseason? I think that about wraps it up. Uh, preseason. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think overall, pretty much overall impressed. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. Um, not a whole lot of negatives, and uh, yeah, I'm ready to go watch some real football. I don't know about you guys, but I'm done talking. I'm ready to I'm watch pumped, some football. I'm I, mean, I can feel it in the air. It's an exciting time to be a Jaguars fan. I'm, I'm ready to get. I can't for wait sure. for the first home game. The tailgating is going to be legit. Y'all going to see it. I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, that about wraps it up for this show. And for the fans out there, we love the questions. Keep them coming. Social media, get at us uh, questions and comments. We love it. Uh, ben? Yeah, if, if anybody wants to, like, you know, highlight some of you want us to talk about, a player we want to, you want to talk about, you know, comment. We'll, we'll bring it up. We'll talk yeah, about Yeah, that's, it. you know, we're all, we've all been getting text messages or we run into people and they say, hey, man, I'm watching the show. It was really great. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe yeah. and, and leave comments. That way, you know, we want to engage mm-hmm. everybody. You know, yeah. So make sure and that you We you're... want to talk about what you want to talk about or highlight a certain player or what, what you see that we didn't talk about, you know, and we'll bring it up. And uh, highlight the football's coming up soon. All right, Jacksonville, one more thing. Uh, Hurricane Idalia, Tropical Storm Idalia, whatever it is. You all know the drills. Uh, stay have safe. a party. Uh, have a party. Stay safe uh, first and foremost. But uh, if you're off work, you know, watch the old episodes. Catch Absolutely. up on them. And, uh, uh, Tell yes. Ben to stop buying jerseys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Spot on Jaguars. Thank you. Jeff, we got to get the jerseys away from this guy. We, we have to, he has to stop talking about that it. Jinx is just or take his debit card Please. or something. I'm going to tell his wife. No, no, no. no I'm going to no, tell no, his no, wife. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell his wife how much he's spending 
and, and not spitting <laughs> up on her. Hey, let's okay? be let's be Please. reasonable. No.